So I'm out by the seafront today, just checking out a new area that I've been meaning to come to, doing a little bit of scouting, and I figured it'd be a good time to bring along the Olympus XA, which is a camera that is kind of somewhat new to me. I've shot a couple rolls of film with this, but I actually haven't developed any of it yet. So I'm gonna shoot two rolls of black and white today, take a look at the initial results, and kind of see how this camera performs. So if you're watching this channel, I'm sure you're probably pretty familiar with this camera. It's one of the more, I'd say like iconic ones in the film photography world and it's still very popular as well. And obviously, uh, you know, one of the standout features of this thing is just how compact it is. It's incredibly tiny. That's what led to me buying it, you know, just to have this take anywhere camera that you can put in your coat pocket, especially for those days where you aren't necessarily say going out to shoot, but just in, you know, if you see something that you want to capture, this is still very capable of doing that. If you're in the market for a compact 35mm camera, the options are kind of endless, ranging anywhere from well under $100 to upwards of $1,000 if you get one of the more sought after Contax models. The Olympus that I picked up, I paid £100 for, and that was tested, and it also came with the flash unit. So, the model that I bought is the original Olympus XA, and you can get, I think, four other versions of this camera, but this was kind of the most fully featured or had the most, I guess, like professional features. So this has rangefinder focusing. The other models are either zone focusing or fixed focus, I believe. So that's pretty cool. And then this also had the fastest lens out of the bunch. So this has a 35 mil 2.8. The others were, I think, a 35 3.5. And then one of the other kind of standard things is just, this has automatic aperture priority mode. So you just pick your aperture on the front of the camera here and then it, does the rest. So, you know, some pretty cool features, again, when you take into account how compact this camera actually is. One of my favorite things about shooting 35 millimeters is just kind of the change of pace from medium format. There's kind of this spontaneity and this freedom to it. And I can definitely say that the XA adds to that. And I can see myself bringing it places and probably capturing things that I may have otherwise missed out on. I like the idea of it being just this camera that I can use to kind of document day-to-day -day life. So the one knock on this camera that you read often is just people complaining about uh, the rangefinder patch and just it being dim. I haven't found it that bad. Again, I don't shoot with rangefinders that often, but you know, also for me, I'm using, you know, a lot of my work is like landscape. So especially with this camera, shooting at like F8 or F11, as long as I'm focused at, uh, they even actually, they have it marked here in red, three feet. If you're shooting at five, six to three feet, you'll have everything, I'm assuming from infinity to like a couple of meters in focus. So uh, focusing really hasn't been that big of an issue for me. And I actually didn't find the rangefinder patch that bad when I do need to use it. Other than that, you know, the more I use this camera, the more I get used to it. It's obviously, you know, the first few times out with it, it is like a little bit fiddly. It's so tiny, you know, it's hard to know kind of where to grab and stuff like that. And just uh, getting used to, you know, the little focusing lever and stuff like that as I <laughs> fire frame as I'm talking here. Uh, but certainly getting out with it today and spending like a full day with it, it's starting to uh, feel pretty comfortable, which is nice. Another roll of T-Max. See if I can finish this one before the day's over. A couple hours of light left, so it'll be interesting. Okay, so I think that is a wrap for the day. Got about maybe an hour and a half left of light, but pretty burnt out of this area, but excited about what I got, I think. So I'm gonna tour home, take a long route and see if 
I spot anything on the way for a couple last images. So I ended up spending the last hour of the day just in a smaller town on the coast and I created some of my favorite images so far with the Olympus. Just a combination of the T-Max, which is probably my favorite black and white film with Twilight, you know, the brighter sky and kind of the darker midtones and shadows just really provided a lot of interesting creative opportunities. Overall, I was really happy with some of the images I created from this day and it was good to get out and just get a better feel for this camera. Okay, so I wanted to take a couple minutes and jump on the computer now that obviously I've developed the film, had a chance to look at the images and stuff like that. You've seen a bunch already in this video, but I just wanted to kind of browse through a few of them and talk about my thoughts a little bit now that I've had a chance to kind of dig in a little deeper to them. And, you know, obviously I enjoyed this camera. And like I said before, you know, it's iconic. There's kind of a lot of hype around it. And I will say, First off, after seeing the results, yes, it's an incredibly capable camera, um, but no more so than, you know, a lot of other 35 millimeter cameras as well. So, you know, they're, I think at times it's easy to get kind of hyped up and, you know, really pick these like specific ways to describe like lenses and the way it renders and stuff. It produces some beautiful images, yes, but there's lots of other cameras that are capable of doing it as well. But obviously with this camera, the big thing is the size of it. So having a camera, you know, that's this tiny uh, that can produce really nice results like this, that's what makes it so appealing to me and that's why I'm absolutely gonna be hanging on to this. But uh, let's jump on here. We'll take a look just at a few. I wanna kind of show you just a closer look so we can kind of get a feel for, you know, the detail that this camera can render and stuff like that. So these were all scanned uh, here at home on the CoolScan 9000, also developed uh, here at home in, in uh, Ilford DDX as well. I love how this looks. T-Max has quickly become my favorite black and white film. Uh, but let's jump on here. We'll take a look at an image here. So I will say as well, I suffered from some crazy uh, curly film. I could not get this film to dry flat. And also for the first time since developing at home, some really bad watermarks and dust. I've never experienced that yet on medium format. Uh, so don't judge me too hard when we look at some of these. Uh, but anyways, love this image. The, the light was amazing in the evening here. But this is a good example just to take a look. You know, if we go into 100% here, let's close out these side windows. And we'll make this smaller. So this image is like 5,200 pixels uh, on the long edge. I think this is cropped a little bit. So, you know, this was at 4,000 DPI on the cool scan. And it looks amazing. I mean, you know, if we look at these details in the car, you know, for 35 mil, especially with an ISO 400 speed film, uh, it, it looks nice. It looks really nice. The, uh, the other thing I will say as well, since this film was so curled, you know, I just had a hell of a time trying to get it flat in the film holder. So in some of the images at the edges, they are soft. So I got the film under a bunch of books. You know, when I do kind of a longer term review of this camera, I will be curious just to see how this lens performs kind of at the edges, but certainly, you know, over most of the frame and in the center, it looks nice. It looks really nice, especially for this little tiny thing that fits in your pocket. Um, let's, uh, I marked a couple. We won't look at too many of them just to, you know, not take up too much time here, but here's another one as well. And if we go into 100% again, I mean, you can see that the, there's a ton of detail. <laughs> the lens is certainly very capable. So really happy with how it's performed. We'll look at a couple more here. I have a wider one uh, right here. So this is at 100% as well. This is more of like a landscape image. We'll wait till it loads up. Uh, so that's 100%. We'll zoom out. Uh, there is the image. But when we go in, we'll just let that kind of load. Uh, yeah, the performance of it is nice for sure. Like I said, you know, a lot of other, I have found that like most major manufacturers, they're like higher quality lenses, even, you know, most like fast lenses for manufacturers, ones that would be marketed as like a little more professional from back in the day, they're all going to perform pretty nice. You know, it's when you get into these like weirder off-brand ones uh, that you're going to notice the biggest difference. Uh, so this wasn't too surprising, but obviously you know that you hear a lot about this lens and how it performs, and it certainly didn't fall short. Uh, it looks really nice. 
But overall, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm actually quite happy with a few images from uh, just this day of shooting. A lot of these ones in the evening, especially this one, this is probably my favorite. I love twilight, you know, when the sky is super bright and especially shooting black and white, you can get a lot of the kind of the foreground and midground that fall into shadow a little bit and get darker. But this is probably my favorite image from the shoot. But yeah, overall, I mean, so far, definitely impressed. Uh, it didn't disappoint. I still feel like it's gonna take some getting used to just using this thing. It still is a little bit fiddly. I found uh, when shooting with like one hand, it was just a struggle at times, um, just because there's not much to grip onto. But you know, obviously the reason you buy this is for the size, so there is gonna be a few trade-offs. But yeah, I mean, really cool camera. I haven't shot with a lot of these like compact 35 mils. Obviously there's some ones that are really hyped up, the contacts and stuff like that. I could just never personally, you know, get myself to go and spend like a thousand dollars on like an old electronic camera. So these things, you know, especially if you go for like the XA2 or something, if you don't mind zone focusing, uh, just a, a, a neat camera that is a take anywhere that, you know, from what I've seen using it for just a day and an evening, uh, can certainly perform and produce some really nice results. So anyways, hope you enjoyed this video, this first look at the Olympus. Probably gonna be a couple months before I get around to doing a longer term review, just because I want, just like with all my reviews, just to spend some time to really understand Cameron and learn it the best. But I am gonna take this out tomorrow, gonna go shoot some expired film, picked up some uh, AGFA, old 35 mil film. So we'll be using this again for that. Stay tuned for that video. But until then, I just wanna say thank you for watching. Appreciate all the support, all the comments, all that stuff, and I'll talk to you soon.